Now that you've become more familiar with Unix commands, we can download an fMRI package and install it with Unix. If you haven't already downloaded FSL, watch this video. When you're done, come back to this tutorial. When you downloaded and installed FSL, you may have seen a few things you didn't completely understand. For example, if you go to your home directory and type cat.bashrc, you'll see this block of code. To understand what's going on here, you'll need to understand shells, paths, and variables. First, let's talk about shells. Think of the shell as an environment in which you can write Unix commands. We used a shell in previous tutorials, but you may not have been aware of it. When you open the terminal, it uses a shell to interpret what you're typing. Also, there are many different shells, and each one has a different syntax, or specific way that the words in your command need to be organized, just like in human languages. For example, there are two major shells, the born shell, with a widely used version called bash or born again shell, and the C shells, with one popular variation called the T shell or TCSH. These commands we've used so far, cd, ls, pwd, and so on, are called built in commands, and they can be used the same way in both shells. But there are important differences when you do a more advanced operation, such as setting a variable. Setting a variable, also known as variable assignment, takes a string and assigns it a value. The idea is to use the variable as shorthand for a value, and if necessary, update the variable as a script runs. For example, let's assign the value 3 to the variable x. If you are in the bash shell, which is the default on most computers, you can do this by typing x equals 3, just like an algebra class. To check the value stored in the variable, type echo dollar sign x. The dollar sign is a reserved character that has a special meaning and cannot be used as a variable. The dollar sign indicates that what comes immediately after it, in this case x, is a variable. The command returns 3, the value stored in the variable x. Compare this with a different shell, the T shell. Switch your terminal to the T shell by typing tcsh and pressing enter. If we typed the same command as before, you'll get an error that says command not found. That's because the syntax for assigning a variable is different in the T shell. To do the same variable assignment, we have to type set x equals 3, then type echo dollar sign x to make sure it's set the correct value. If you want to know which shell you are currently in, type echo dollar sign 0. Right now, we're in what is called a subshell. We were initially in the bash shell, and then we switched to a T shell. When you open up a new terminal, think of that terminal as the Unix world. We call this world the environment. If we travel to different countries in the real world, usually the language is different. In Unix, that's like changing the shell and having a different syntax. But certain things remain constant, like gravity. If we wanted to have our x variable be the same no matter which shell that we're in, we would type export x3. In TCSH, we would type set env x3. Note that if you set this global variable, it's available only to the current shell and to subshells. If you set a global variable in the current subshell and then return to a previous shell by typing exit, you will not have access to it. To leave the current subshell and return to the previous shell, type exit and press enter. Now that we know what variables are, we can see how they are being used in the FSL setup. The code in the .bashrc file, which stands for bash run commands, and is the code that is run any time you create a new shell in bash, updates something called the path variable. The path variable is a list of directories that are searched any time you try to run a command. You can see this list of directories by typing echo dollar sign path in all capitals. Your output may look different from mine, since I've added more directories to my path. 
notice that there are several absolute paths pointing to different directories, with the colon acting as a separator between paths. When you type a command and press enter, the shell looks for that command within each directory in your path. If it's not there, it returns an error saying that the command is not found. Paths allow you to use FSL commands from anywhere in the terminal. FSL, like all other software packages, has a library or directory that contains all of the functions needed to run FSL, such as FSL info, FSL maths, flirt, and so on. To run those commands, we would need to either be in that directory or we would need to specify the absolute path to the command that we want to run. To give us the flexibility to run FSL commands anywhere, we'll set the path variable to indicate where the FSL library is. Note that the FSL installation script automatically creates these paths in both bash and TCSH. Other packages, such as AFNI and FreeSurfer, do not automatically create these paths, and you'll have to add the lines they give you, either using redirection or by opening up the run command files in a text editor, for example by typing open.bashrc. Now try the following exercises to review and consolidate what we've learned today. You'll need to understand variables in order to use for loops which we'll talk about in the next video.